All right, so uh, today what we're going to look at is um, getting user input via the keyboard in a My World program. All right, so we looked at how to use the mouse, and so today we're going to do some keyboard input stuff. Um, so that we're going to start out by making a new class. All right, and since this thing didn't figure out where I wanted it, I'm going to type in using user input. And then here, what I'm going to do is just call this keyboard input world. All right. So I want this thing to have my world as its super class. And I want it to have a main method so that I can run it. Okay. So really three things that you should have to fill out. Keyboard input world is the name. My world is the super class. And we want it to have a main method so that we can run it. Okay, so I'm going to finish that. And then we should get something that looks something like that. The first thing that we want to do is inside of the main method, tell it to make a new object out of this class. So new keyboard input world. And I'm just going to kind of tidy things up here. All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to use the keyboard, uh, the up and down arrows and then the left and right arrows, in order to make an oval get bigger and smaller in the width and height. Okay, so what that means is I want to have variables to define my width. So I'm going to go to the top of the class and, and define some instance variables. Okay, so they're all going to be inst. It's going to be width. And I'm going to start my width out at 10. And then I'm also going to include height. And that's going to uh, be 10 as well. So there's a comma separating those variables. We talked about that yesterday. Okay, then inside of the draw method, what I'm going to do is go g.setColor indigo. Right, you can use whatever color you want as long as it's defined in my world. And then I'm going to go g.fillOval. And I'm just going to pick some... Oop, that's not what I want. Okay, so I'm just picking uh, the position 200, 200, so this is X and Y, and then I want the width and height to be able to change, so for those I'm putting in the variables width and height. Okay, if I run that, let me just close that, so we're just looking at one thing here. Um, if I run this, Okay, the position of this oval is at 200, 200, so that's 200 from the left, 200 down, and that defines the top left of that oval, and then its width is 10, and its height is 10, so we see this little purple dot, or little indigo dot. All right, so uh, what we would like to do now is use the keyboard in order to change the width and the height. Okay, we're going to start out with the height. But if we're going to uh, use the keyboard, we're going to use um, one of three different kind of key listener or key event uh, methods. And those are key pressed, key released, and key typed. Okay? And the one we're going to do today is public void key pressed. So just like yesterday, um, key pressed has a parameter called key event, all right? And just like yesterday, we called the mouse event mouse, so we're going to call the key event key, all right? And what we're saying here is that instructions in this method will execute when a when any key is pressed okay so if I hit the F key gets pre uh, this thing happens if I hit the 9 key 
this thing happens. If I hit the up key, and it, this thing happens. All right. Inside of here, then, we have key event, which is underlined because it still needs to be what? Imported. Good. So remember that we import any class that it doesn't automatically recognize. Um, and it won't work if it's something that doesn't really exist, okay, or isn't already defined. Okay, but here I just mouse over key event and import key event right there. And that adds this line of code that tells this class where to find a key event so it can be used. All right. Um, when any key is pressed, we're going to want to repaint. And that, remember, clears the graphics. And uh, when we're done here, and calls draw again. Okay? So before that happens, we want to make some changes before we repaint, okay? And so this is going to be something a little bit new for you guys, all right? Um, but what we need to do is we need to figure out which key got pressed, all right? So we need to make a decision. We need to say, like, when this one gets pressed, do this stuff, okay? And the way that that happens in a programming language is usually with the word if, and it's in a, in a, um, in a block, okay? So we go like something like this, if, and then we put parentheses, okay? And then we put um, a, a block of code, so we use this brackets to say, this is the stuff that's going to happen if the condition that's inside of there is true. Well, right now we don't have a condition inside of there, so we have to add that in. Okay, so what we're going to do is go inside of those parentheses, and then we're going to put a condition in there, all right? And the condition is kind of weird for the key pressed, so I'm kind of throwing a lot of stuff at you, but I think you'll figure it out as we go. So what we want to know is something about this key event. We want to know which key this key event represents. So we're going to go like this, key dot get key code, okay? Now, I'm going to show something else to you guys. If you're one of those people who thinks like, you just type way too fast and I can't keep up with you, all right, start getting better at using Eclipse. And what I mean by that is, as soon as you put in get key, it starts giving you options of things that you can do with get key. So one of those things, and I can arrow down and up through here. So one of those things is get key code. So highlight that and then hit enter and it just fills it in for you. Okay, so that's sometimes that'll help you speed up your coding. And what I want to know is if the key that they entered or that they pressed is equal to, all right, and this is something new as well, but the way we check to see if one thing is equal to another is with two equal signs, all right. And so we want to know if that thing is equal to the key event. And here's another time where we're going to do key event, and then we're going to go dot. And now it gives me a bunch of stuff that I can use from key event. All right. All of the keys that are on the keyboard are represented starting with VK underscore and then something. All right. So this is the zero key. This is the six key. Okay. This is the backspace key. All right. And we want to figure out the up key, so we're going to hope that it's just up, and we'd be right. All right, so this code right now is saying, if the key that was pressed is the up arrow, then do the stuff that's inside of here, all right? And what we want to do when the up arrow is pressed is we want to increase the height of our oval. So we're going to go height should be reassigned its old value plus 10. All right. And that's increasing the height by 10 pixels. Okay, so if I run that now, 
and this should work for you. When I hit the up arrow, it starts changing the height. Okay, so it's increasing the height by 10 and then repainting, which clears it out and draws it again from here using the new height that was just increased by 10. All right, so I'm going to come around and help you guys. What I would like you to do then is try to get it so that when you hit the right arrow, it increases the width. All right. All right, so looking back, what some of you maybe tried to do at first was think like, oh, okay, well, we wanted to know if the up arrow was pressed, so we did this, and now we want to know if the right arrow is pressed. So let's copy all of this, okay, paste it in there, and then change this to right. Except that that won't work, okay? So it, the reason it won't work is because you can't have two things, whether they're variables or methods, you can't have two of these things with the same name and the same set of parameters, okay? So instead, what we want to do is we want to think about it like this. Key pressed is going to happen with anytime any key is pressed. So once I press a key, I get inside of there, all right? Then, um, this is saying, if that thing was the up key, do this stuff. And so what I want to do is I want to say, well, what if it wasn't the up key? What if instead it was, what if, key.getKeyCode equals right? Okay, what if it was the right arrow? And then what do I want to have happen when that happens, okay, when the right arrow is pressed. So what, what should I put in here? All right. And so that's what you should have done in there. And now with that code, you can go up and increase that or go right and increase that. Okay. How many of you already made it so that you can decrease the width and the height? All right, so if you didn't do that, try that. You know, maybe the left arrow does something, maybe the down arrow does something, right? And then once you, um, once you finish that, for those of you who are already done with that, if I do this, it kind of goes off the screen. And so it would be nice if I could still have that thing kind of centered so I can see the majority of it. Now I can still make it so big that it wouldn't matter, but that's kind of a challenge problem, is to kind of see if we can get this thing to kind of remain where the center is near the center of my screen. So that it fills not the bottom quarter, but fills the whole thing up. Okay. So that's your challenge problem.